technology is a wonderful thing, isn't it? And there's no piece of technology that I'd rather be sitting in than this. The first road going T50 from Gordon Murray Automotive. Now we'll be seeing more of this incredible T50 later on, but it's not the main reason we're here today. We're heading to Gordon Murray Group's spectacular new headquarters for the worldwide premiere of their new car. Now it's early days, but soon this will be the world headquarters for the entire Gordon Murray group, including automotive. This HQ is in an incredible location, 54 acres of pristine parkland right on the edge of London. I think I might move in. Oh, I am absolutely buzzing after my first drive of T50 on the road and I could talk about it all day but we've got some very important work to do here and I see that Professor Murray has already arrived. That is one of Gordon's favourite cars and it is a perfect example of his lifelong passion for lightweight combined with timeless design and it is an absolute beauty. This is the T50 production facility. As you can see, there's a lot of activity going on, but I'm looking for one man in particular. As if by magic. Hey, Dario, how are you? Know. Yeah, good to see you. How you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah. What is going on here? It's busy. So this is it. This is the production facility for the T50. Well, um, XP car is going through it at the moment, but this is where the, the actual customer cars will go through too. Yeah, so it all happened here. We've got the three cars on the line at the moment. Now, it's easy to get distracted by T50, but we're here to talk about T33 the new car, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, T33 is a very different car, but uh, I mean, first and fundamentally, we will only make 100 of them. That is an is a, a overriding principle for us. But of course, it still follows the key principles of the business, uh, driving perfection, technical expertise, and engineering art associated with everything that we, uh, we produce. Okay, so this is show and tell. Yeah. And this is one of the door handles, which, believe it or not, the actual leather on the handle weighs more than the actual metal component. That's the heaviest part on that component. And I'm trying to reference what this weighs to give you some idea, and it's nothing. It's, it's, yeah. it's like paper. Yeah, the same here. So the yeah. leather weighs more than the metal? Yes. I've driven T50 with all yeah. this, these pieces in yeah. it, and it feels, I mean, it's substantial, yeah. but they weigh absolutely yeah. nothing. I mean, obviously T50 is our, is our halo car, but, but it takes nothing away from the T33. Same principles of business in terms of light weighting, technical attention to detail, all the way through. It, it, to see these cars come off the line, it's, it's magical every time you see one finishing. So some fascinating insights into the ethos behind Gordon Murray Automotive. Now I'm hearing that there's some last minute preparations before we can actually get to see T33. So first, from an engineering and design point of view, how did we actually get here? Let's have a look at the evolutionary journey of Gordon Murray Automotive. Gordon Murray's first grown pre-winning car is the Brabham BT44. The 1975 version is reckoned to be one of the most elegant Formula One cars of all time. Powered by the famous Ford Cosworth DFV, it is also competitive. In this period, Gordon's cars win five Grand Prix. Four of them with a great Argentinian driver, Carlos Reutemann. In 83, Gordon is still at Brabham. Last minute rule changes mean that he's had to design and build a new car in 14 weeks. It's another timelessly beautiful design, the BT52, which takes Nelson Piquet to his second world championship. Ten years on, and Gordon fulfills a lifelong dream to build the world's lightest road car. 
It's called the Rocket, and it's powered by a high-revving Yamaha motorcycle engine. Lightweight and a clever design. For those of us lucky enough to have driven the Rocket, trust me, we'll never forget the experience. Over time, Gordon has been recognised as one of the great automotive designers. And today, with the arrival of T50, his quest for driving perfection continues. What on earth will Gordon Murray think of next? I, for one, cannot wait to find out. Well, there you have it. Some quick glimpses across 50 years of spectacular design. But there's one more element to consider. Do you remember Gordon's bright yellow De Tomaso that was parked outside? Well, it's part of his collection of classic 60s cars. They all had a big impact on a young Gordon Murray and have two things in common, lightweight and beautiful design. When you combine stunning aesthetics and today's technical wizardry, you arrive at Gordon Murray Automotive's latest creation. And here it is, the T33. Wow. <laughs> You've done it again. Yeah, what do you think? Well, I had purposely not seen this car in the flesh until right now. And it is stunning. It's, it's beautiful. It's pretty. It's classic. It's, I mean, it's mind-blowing. So what were your inspirations with it? Oh, definitely the 60s. So the 60s were uh, the period that I grew up watching racing and, and the sports cars. And the racing sports cars from that period was always my favourite and still are my yeah. favourites. They're beautiful. It's not retro, it's just taking elements from that and putting it in a modern shape. It's absolutely beautiful. And every time I'm looking here, seeing that the light hitting different panels, I'm getting different, different shapes from it. Oh, you must be really proud of this. No, one. I think we all are, the whole, the whole team, and it's a, it's a pretty little thing. And hopefully it'll still look pretty in 20, 30 years' time. That's the plan. When you say little, give me some idea of the size, because it looks... It looks quite a, it's got a lot of presence. It looks quite a big car. Well, it's actually slightly longer than T50 by a few millimeters and the same width. So that puts us exactly um, Porsche Boxster footprint. Oh, I would have said it was a lot bigger than that. That's well done, great packaging, well done. Yep, um, Kevin Richards and myself, my creative director, you know, in the beginning when we first announced the next car, people thought it might be just another version of T50, but actually it yeah. couldn't be more different. No, I mean, start was two seats, first of all. Yep, uh, completely different architecture, uh, different chassis, different running gear. I mean, it really is, uh, once again, a clean sheet of paper. Well, let's get into the details, because we love to do that. We'll start at the, the back. So, X-Track gearbox? Yes, except this time, we're offering it with a, a manual like 50, but we've also done a brand new gearbox with X-Track, um, which is paddle shift. And once again, a very usable motor car. Yeah, that's what we've always promised people. So luggage in the front? Yes, it's three luggage compartments. It's, uh, so we've got a front compartment, um, which is fairly typical on a supercar, but then we've got two side compartments here, a bit like 50. They top load uh, with the suitcases, but it's rear hinged and they're open sideways like this, like the old fashioned suicide doors. So. <laughs> that would be dramatic outside the hotel, wouldn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. So moving forward, I mean, two seats, as you said, but driver-centric again. Absolutely. So um, everything driver-focused, uh, secondary controls, primary controls, um, absolutely the same ethos as T50. And the same quality of switch gear and all that. We haven't, stuff. we're not backing off at all. Anything we do will have engineering art. Which is one of the, the principles of Gordon Murray Automotive. Absolutely. 
traditional mirrors this time. Yes, so the central driving position um, meant the mirrors would have had to have been right in the middle of the front wing, which... Uh, Not a good look. No, no. Kevin and myself just didn't want that to happen. Um, but once you go to a conventional right or left-hand drive, and we're offering it in both, um, you can actually go to conventional mirrors. So left and right-hand drive, so federalised as well? Fully federalised, yeah. Oof, must be a headache to, to get that up. Yeah, and a lot of money. <laughs> I love this crease. I love this crease line all the way down the front. And to me, walking up here, the first thing I saw were these beautiful, long headlights. Yeah, that's a very 60s thing. If you look at, the, at all the pretty cars in the 60s, the headlamps weren't sideways. They were in car line, if you like, and narrow and slim. And it took quite a lot of ingenuity to get that to pass all the, all the latest crash test regulations and get it to look like that. Well, glad you did it because it's absolutely stunning. Oh, I'm really pleased with those. I'm seeing the uh, the intake here. What's the what's the story with that? Is it similar to, to the T50 design? Yeah, so like T50, it's ram induction again, which gives us quite a few extra horsepower and high speed. But unlike 50, where this inlet is actually part of the uh, of the monocoque on T50, this is a separate item and this is attached directly to the engine, like a 1960s or 70s racing car. I'm thinking sort of the BT44, that big yep, tall it's airport. Yeah, much like that. So the same Cosworth as V12? Yep, another version of that lovely V12. It's a, it's a different configuration. It's still the same basic block and heads, but um, quite a few different details and it's still revving to 11,000 instead of the 12. Spicy still. That's enough, yeah. yeah. And around 600 horsepower. And the car weighing? under 1100. That'll get the job done. Indeed, yeah. So it's still a few hundred kilos ahead of the opposition. I think we know a lot more about this engine now than we did when we launched T50. Indeed, I mean, when we launched 50, uh, we all hoped it was going to be the world's best ever road car engine. That's what we told people. <laughs> now you've driven it and I've driven it. We know it is. Oh, absolutely. So obviously the basic configuration, the block and the heads are the same as T50, but actually it's quite a different engine. Um, it has a completely new induction system and a new exhaust system, completely different cams, um, mods to the cylinder head, different variable valve timing. But still 3.9, still 3.9 litres? Yeah, it's exactly the same capacity, same bore and stroke, um, but actually quite a different version of the engine. But the same family? Oh, absolutely, yeah. This is still, um, the throttle response on this compared, if, if throttle response is one thing, but if you couple that with a lightweight vehicle, you get instantaneous acceleration and that, that throttle response, I don't think will ever be bettered. No, I think this is definitely the high point of the internal combustion engine. Let's go have one last look at it before we go. Talking about the, sort of the family aspect of things, when you're making 100 cars at a time, you know all your customers, whether that's T33 customers, T50 customers, and they become, I guess, like family. It's so important to us, the family feel and the customer journey and feeling part of it and understanding not just the car, but what goes into the car. And we're finding already with T50 owners, they're really enjoying that experience. I really think you've nailed it. Absolutely beautiful. Well, for our last uh, non-hybrid car, it had to be something really special. Mission accomplished. Yep. You still got the T50 here? I have. Can I get a lift? <laughs> yeah, but I'm driving. <laughs>